How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you just super. I'm going to stop sharing here so that you can grab the screen. Okay, share screen. Can you see it? Uh, let's see. It's coming up. up. It's coming up. It's loading. Boom. There you go. Okay, great. I thought I had the chat up, and now I lost the chat. That always uh, happens. You know, okay. it's Got down it. there on the bottom there. And, <laughs> you know, and Melissa, I'll also be watching questions, too. So if you're just rocking along and want to stop and say, hey, Raleigh, are there any questions? I'll be glad to feed them to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So Thanks welcome. For being here. It's so nice to be here today. And can you believe it? There's only 59 more days until January 1st. That is real. I mean, uh, just it's just astonishing. It's almost 2022. So it's been one of those types of years where it's just flown by. And so we're going to talk about trading today. We're also going to talk about inflation and specifically, you know, what you can do in order to make money in the market, because there's really only one way to beat inflation you have to earn more money okay so you know you can obviously spend less if you want to cover the cost of things that are going up or you can do what you can earn more money so the idea of trading is that if you know what to do and if you know how to trade and if you know how to make money how do you make more you add size to your trades but a lot of people unfortunately do not know how to trade they think they know how to trade but they really don't they're doing something that may sometimes work, but often, overall, it loses. So this, the, the reason for my success is that I'm very consistent. I've been doing what I do, which I'm going to talk about today, for you know almost 13 years. I don't do anything else. I've increased my size over the years. I actively day trade. I started doing options about six, seven years ago. But overall, what I do it has been the same for all the years that I've traded. I've just gotten better at what I do and increased my size. Consistency counts because you have to have more wins than losers. You're not going to make money in every single trade. I don't make money in every single trade, but it's the idea that my expectation is I get up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and my expectation is that I will win, that I will make money. And sometimes, unfortunately, I have a loss, but my expectation is that the next trade will work, that will win. So I have about a 70, 75% win ratio on my trade. So you figure if you come and you want to learn from me and trade with me, of every 10 trades, you're going to have seven winners and three losers. And that is enough actually to not only earn a living trading, but actually make quite a lot of money. Because many of the trades that we take actually have big wins. And we'll talk about that today too. Now I'm seeing the chats. Um, I'll try to go along if I have uh, any questions. I'll talk about them as we're talking today. If you have questions though afterwards, you can also email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can call me at 99-3200-GAT. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And when I am on television, I try to post my hits. I'm on really every channel. There's no channel that I haven't been on. I'm frequently on Fox News and Real America's Voice at least once a week. Uh, so it's, it's, it's fun to talk about economics and all these things on TV. Uh, but really, it has had a, a major impact on me as a consumer, even when I being here in New York. Uh, we're, we're seeing the impact across the board, across the country, where people are not getting supplies. People can't get things. And what's happening is that stores are increasing their prices because they're not getting as many of the goods in. And one of the reasons they're not getting the goods into the stores is because they don't have the truck drivers. As crazy as that sounds, that is a major problem right now. Uh, I have a friend, actually, that works for one of the top trucking companies in the United States in Wisconsin. and. They, they've lost a lot of drivers. A lot of people went off for COVID. They can't get them back to work. They've been on the extended unemployment. Um, they're not, they have to be tested for the CDL licenses for the drug testing like every week or something. And many of them are not passing the test now because marijuana is legal. Even though it's legal, you can't, you can't drive uh, high in, with a CDL license. So there's just so many problems that are going on right now uh, with truck drivers. And that is really affecting uh, what's happening with getting our goods and services. Now, everybody's seen what's happening with the ports, how all the things are on the ports out off the coast of California, off the coast of San Diego, but there's other problems just for the things that are here that we're making in the United States that we're manufacturing here where we don't have a way to get them out. Companies are manufacturing things and we don't have the drivers to get them to the stores, and that's a big problem. It, it's kind of like 
really reminiscent of what's been happening with uh, the, the COVID, you know, like about a year and a half ago. So overall, looking at what's happening, let's just talk about trading. And then we're going to talk a little bit of, a, more about inflation. Why are you here today? Okay. Are you losing money trading? Is that one of the reasons you're here? If it is, if that's one of the reasons you're here, you're going to learn something today. And my suggestion is if you're losing money trading, then you should, you should actually take a break. If you're trading and you're making money, but you're not making enough money, that could be one reason you're here today too. You're learning, you need to learn a new strategy. You're thinking about branching out. You need to make more money. Also, if you're new and that's one of the reasons you're here, you don't know where to start. It's important to learn a strategy before you begin to trade and risk money, especially if you're brand new. And people talk about books. You can read all kinds of books, but I find, and I did when I first started too, I didn't learn how to make money reading books. You can read basic things about technical analysis and candlesticks and all kinds of stuff like that, but it's not going to teach you the nuts and bolts of how to make money in the market. And you really don't need it, quite frankly. Are you trading now and don't have a strategy that is consistent and need one? Again, we were talking about this earlier, having more wins than losses. That could be one of the reasons you're here too. And again, are you worried about inflation? Okay, so here we are, we're in this period, like I said, and many people are worried about it. And they're worried about interest rates going up as well, which will affect pretty much everyone, specifically the housing market. So right now people are concerned about inflation. Everything's going up, food, gas, housing, you name it. More so in some places than others. It depends where you live in the country. And again, I'm talking specifically about the United States. I trade the US stock market, but you know, many of these problems are happening all over the world. More so we're seeing here though in the United States. And people are looking for ways to make extra money. While you can go out and you can get a second job or a, a second part-time job or a second full-time job. Yes, you could, you could do that. It takes a lot of time out of your life. It can be exhausting and it also takes time away from your family and friends. And nobody really wants to work 40, 50 hours a week in a normal full-time job and then go on to work an extra 20 hours a week where you're working 60 hours a week just to get by because the cost of things has increased so much. So one of the nice things about trading and why I love to trade and why I started trading to begin, to begin with actually, which was a long time ago, like I said, is I like the idea of being able to work from home. So you can train from home if you know what to do and you have a computer and a trading account. You, you don't have to be in the United States either to trade. And I only trade usually in the morning, in the first half hour, hour of the day. So you don't have to sit for eight hours at your desk, you know, just like you would a normal job as a trader. You can do this full time and full time means basically only an hour a day. And that's five days a week. And so a lot of people also can train uh, daily and also work whatever job they happen to have as well. It's not the same as getting an extra part-time job where you have to leave and go out 20, 25 hours a week. So it is a nice way to add to your pocketbooks each month. Again, the conundrum for many people is how are you going to do it? How are you going to make the money? Where do you start? What do you do? Okay. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about my system specifically. The system that I use is based on gaps. But it is important to have a strategy before you risk money in the market. And it is also important, I think, to have a strategy that works consistently. Everyone's on all over these Reddit stocks. There's a new one every other week. If I mapped out a strategy for that, I tell you, every single one of them looks the same if you print out the daily charts of all of them. They have big spikes up and they have huge, massive sell-offs all the way down. You saw that in the last 24 hours with one of the stocks. That is not a consistent way to trade. You're taking ideas from strangers that you don't even know that have no strategy whatsoever at all. And I get that people want free ideas, but many of those people are losing because they're buying stocks or having big spikes and they immediately sell off and people lose. And then they end up sidelining for weeks and weeks and months and then people are down money in trades. Look at trading as something like you're chunking it out. Look at it as something that is serious. Even if you're only doing it for 30 minutes a day, you should take it seriously, serious enough that you invest money and learning a class like mine and, and that you invest enough time in your life to figure this out and do it and actually get it right. Instead of gambling or taking pot shots at stuff, thinking that you're going to have the next big thing that's going to make you all this money that you ever uh, dreamed of in one big trade. While it's nice to have big wins, and I occasionally do have really nice wins, it's the idea of the chunking it out. And if you think about that and think about it in the long term, you're going to be much better off in the end. And then all of a sudden, after a month, after a week, after six months, after a year, you're going to have way more money than you ever thought 
that you would actually have simply because of the fact that you've been consistent, okay, and you've been winning a lot, and the wins add up. $200 here, $300 here, $500 here, $1,000 here, it adds up, okay? Anyways, I clipped this here off the internet. It's very interesting here. I looked at an inflation calculator. You can put any number you want in here. Just in the last five years, the last five years, the same cost of a $1,000 product from 2016 to 2021, which is right now, has gone up for, for over 14%. So the same thing you would have paid $1,000 for, just the normal cost of inflation now, would be $142.92 more. That's a lot. I, I mean, I, again, I talk on TV every day, and I also have, you know, Fox on a lot here in between when I'm trading in the background. It's crazy when people say, oh, inflation, 2%, 3%, 4%. That's baloney. It is way more than that. It's way more than that even for the cost of foods. Some of the cost of foods that I've seen have quadrupled. Some have doubled. It is more than 14%. Even the last six months, in many, many products you've seen, and depending on where you live in the country, I mean, look at gas prices. I was just in Pennsylvania. It's over $4 a gallon there. Uh, some people, it depends where you live in California. It's 7 something Here in New York, it's over 5 It's nuts. So, I mean, inflation really has been something that every single person has noticed. And again, people who pay to paycheck to paycheck have noticed it more so than wealthy people. But I'm telling you, wealthy people have noticed it. They absolutely have noticed it. And I think people are more concerned, particularly people that are high net income, uh, uh, high net worth individuals are concerned about what this means long term for interest rates. You know, because uh, people that are wealthy still borrow money. They still have mortgages. And this is a situation where we don't know when this is going to end. Now, one of the things like I was talking about was the rising cost of oil, gas, rising cost of food. I clipped this from my from my Amazon cart. Every time I go in, I have things saved sometimes stuff. I want to buy whatever. Up, up, up. Like if I bought something today, if I had it in my cart or didn't buy it today, I mean, and I had it in my cart tomorrow morning, I'll, it'll be up tomorrow morning. Like it'll be up more than tomorrow morning. Like it's crazy. Like, you know, it's just really, really we're in a period where there's no other answer. There's no other choice. The only solution is guess what? make more money make more money that solves everything you want to have more things you want to get forward make more money and you know what it's not about getting by it's not about being the same it's not about making more so you can cover the cost of the things that you have that just cost more now it's the idea of getting ahead i want to get ahead every year every year i want to get ahead and everyone should want to do that too and now people are chasing their tail because things cost more it's not about staying even it's about getting ahead okay so in order to get ahead, the only way ever is to earn more. That's the only way. You can do this one of two ways. You either earn more at your regular job that you have right now, or you get a part-time job, like I said, or you learn how to do something that's going to increase your wealth and income, and trading is something that can do that. Then again, this is not long-term investing. It's income. We're pulling income out of the market every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's how we do it, okay? And any questions here, let me know. Someone's asking about recordings. I think Raleigh is recording all of the sessions. So we're going to talk about advanced technical analysis. We're going to talk about what is a gap. I trade gaps. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about the market. Very briefly here, we had a massive spike up today. This was a chart I clipped, um, I think, a day or two ago, whatever, before the spike. We had a big spike up today. Um, after the Fed talk, the market made a brand new all-time high. The market has been on a tear this year. An absolute tear. Again, if you look at the fundamentals of the market, the backdrop of the economy, it makes no sense. Period of inflation, high unemployment, people still, a lot of people still out of work. Uh, even though the numbers have come down since COVID, it's just people going back to the same jobs. Now we have the vaccine mandates. Many people are deciding to quit. Look for the unemployment numbers to be higher. They could be higher tomorrow. I don't know. We have the unemployment number out soon as well. But bottom line is, this market has been up, 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 up. And at this point now, going into the holiday season, like I said, less than two months in the year, don't expect the market to crash. While theoretically, that could happen. It could. It might. Low odds, that's going to happen. And even if we get a gap down in the market and a one or two day sell off, we're probably going to flip it around again pretty quickly. Because again, even if you don't believe in it, it doesn't make sense. If you say economically, why is this happening? The fact is that money is in the market and it's continuing to buy the market and it's moving up, up, up. And so my market outlook is between now and the end of the year is after the fact that we made new highs, which I didn't think we were going to do, now we're just going to continue higher. That's it. 
I did not think we were going to make new highs, at least as soon as we did. But the fact is we did, and you cannot deny the strength in the market. The banks are very strong, Tesla's strong. A lot of things are ripping if you've been going long trades or even doing calls and options trades. So we were talking about this earlier, and I said, what is it you need to be successful? You need a consistent strategy that works in any market condition. You need a way to make the daily picks. You need a way to enter and exit trades so you make money. And you need good money management, which again seems like trading 101, but I find a lot of people just don't adhere to those rules. So let's talk about what is a gap. What is a gap? This is ZG. We did this this morning. I got out way before it hit the number here. I clipped this charted around 219, but this actually was a short. Okay, so we shorted this today as a day trade. It was a gap. What is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So this closed here. This was yesterday at four o'clock. This is Zillow, okay? Closed here, around 85 and change, boom. Gap down, open, lower, approximately right in here, 73 and change. We shorten it, we got the drop. Now, what is a short? A short is where you're betting where the stock's gonna go down. So for example, if you short a stock at 73 and it drops to 72, what do you make a dollar? If you have 1,000 shares, what would you make? $1,000. We got in and out of this really quick this morning in less than an hour, but it did fall all day, actually. It absolutely fell all day. This is probably still falling. It was a really nice call. So my prediction in this gap was that it was going to fall, and it was lower, and we shorted it. And that's how we made money. So you can make money shorting. You can also make money going long. I'm going to go over here. This was a gap up. It's a couple days ago. Stock closed here, gapped up, rally. You would have made money going long this particular day. I did not do it there, but I'm showing you an example. Now, this again is a daily chart. Down here is the volume. You can see the huge, massive volume in this today. Again, this is a daily chart, and a gap is the difference between the close and the open. There's gap downs, there's gap ups. Okay. So that was today's trade. Now, let's look at Facebook. Again, what is a gap? Everyone knows what Facebook is. This has had a lot of nice gaps in the chart and a lot of big moves. We did this over here back about two weeks ago. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom. You could have shorted it right here. Got the drop. Then it had another gap down over here. She had a big red bar, fell off a cliff. Big sell off. I forget the reason for that. It was news related. Big sell off in Facebook here. Again, down here, the volume. This is a daily chart. Facebook has been one of those stocks that has been struggling, despite the strength in the market, Facebook has been struggling, news, earnings, bad press, whatever the case may be, okay? But again, I'm looking for the gap. What is a gap? Let's look at Microsoft. This closed here, this gapped up. Closed here around 310 and change, boom. Opened up here, this was earnings. This was the 26th, and then the day that it gapped up was the 27th. It was around 315-ish here where it opened, spiked up like crazy. This is a one-day move. The stock moved almost $10 in one day. It was huge. It was significant. This was a long. We went long this as a day trade, and we also did calls in it. Okay. So bottom line is that you can go long gaps, and you can short gaps. You can make money going long. You can make money going short. The key is to find the right gap, the right stock pick to trade, and then to know what direction to trade it. But you only need one of these a day. If you just find one of these a day, you're going to be fine. That's all you need is one trade a day to make money. And again, condensing it helps too with losses. If you're not doing a ton of trades or trading all day long, you're not going to have a lot of losses. That's impossible. Okay? Understand? This Microsoft went like gangbusters after this. Uh, flew over 3.30. This was a, a chart from last week. This was a really nice along. And any questions, let me know. Anyways, I've been talking about gaps. So my strategy is I trade gaps. I called my strategy the golden gap, okay? The reason that I call my strategy the golden gap is that it's like finding gold in the market because if I can find the best pick in the morning to trade, again, I only need one trade and do it, whether it's a long or short, then I, then I feel like it's finding gold. So I coined my strategy that term. What do I do? I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. I go through a whole list of 26 things. It's 26 points. If you come to me, that's what you would learn from me. That is my strategy. That is my system. I rate the gap. If the gap rates more than 20 points per my system, then I will take it on the day to trade. If it does not, 
then I don't do it at all. There are hundreds and thousands of stocks that gap on any given day. Many of those are not playable or they're not good. So it is about fine tuning down to the one thing. And I don't need the market for my moves, which is nice too. One, the market's hard to read sometimes. And two, you know, look at the market now. I mean, it's difficult to go long when we're up 27 days in a row. But the fact is, you've got to find something that works regardless of the market direction. Something that falls if the market's strong or something that falls if the market's weak. Okay, the key to making money is to do something specific on that particular day. You want the volume, you want the momentum, you want everything in your favor. Like, for example, the Zillow that I talked about today, that was earnings. The earnings came out, I think, last night. Whatever they said well, it was whatever they said. They, I think they were bad. But the point is that it was a good gap. And that's why it fell off a planet and basically dropped like almost $10 today, even on the live day. Okay. It's the idea of getting a big move because as one individual trainer, again, all you need is a dollar, two dollars, and you add size onto that and you can make money. And again, talking about inflation this period where people are trying to make extra money, $500 a day is $2,500 a week. And that's a heck of a lot of money for some people to add to their lifestyle. If you can make an extra 10 grand a month, that definitely will cover the cost of inflation that you're dealing with right now, at least for gas and food and housing. And if that's only $500 a month. That's not even some crazy, crazy risk, okay? It's about getting a lot of wins. That is the key. And this is where many people falter. They're trading all day long. They're taking pot shots or have too many losses. And then when they have wins, they barely cover the losses or they do a little bit and they're still down, okay? So my method is designed to find a daily pick and find a good pick and the best pick that I can possibly find. So I have a method and a structure to enter and exit the picks. That is what I'm looking for every single day. And again, if you came to me, that is what you would learn. Any questions here? So far, I feel like I'm talking a little fast. But I'm uh, watching the clock. <laughs> Let me know. If we have time at the end, I'll pull up and see where we close here right before the four o'clock. Anyways, one of the other things that you need is good money management. Goals per day and per week. Your goal should be based on risk size. It's a risk unit. If you're risking $500, you're looking to make $500. If you're risking $1,000, you're looking to make $1,000. It's one risk unit on average should be your goal. And again, you can risk more, okay? Some trades end up being more than that. I got out of the ZG today. I got out of that in the morning pretty quick. If I had held it, I would have made way more, okay? So that's up to you. I'm looking for the best pick, the right direction, and a great entry. Some trades I do hold. I held the Microsoft. I held the Microsoft one. I did not hold the ZG today. So some of them you can make way more, but your expectation per day should be one risk unit, okay? So what will you learn from me if you want to come and learn more after today? You will learn a way to pick the best gap to play each day. And you only need one trade a day to make money. And I think that that's important for people to understand it's, it's really not about chasing things, and it's not about trading for six and a half hours all day, and it's not about trying to do futures and Bitcoin and stocks and options and everything else. You, you, could, you could just get good at one thing. That is all you need to make money, even if you have a small account. There's a guy that started with me, and he started on the options newsletter, and he started out with a $5,000 account, and he increased the account up to $25,000 in six weeks from doing the trades. You get good trades, you can take a small account, and you can build it up. And it doesn't have to take that long. Everybody feels like they have to start out with some huge account or all this money. You don't have to. You start with what you have. The important thing is to start. If you don't have a lot of money, you shouldn't be taking crap trades anyways. But if you have a lot of money, you still shouldn't be taking crap trades. And I think that's a, that's a problem for people where they're always chasing the buck to find this big thing. You will have big wins. Like I said, Microsoft was a big win. ZG today was a huge win. I just didn't hold the train. But there are some that I do, and Microsoft was one of them. And it is when do I train? In the morning, early, quick, 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 between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. I like to get in, I like to get out, and again, I work from home, and that's something that's very convenient for me. I've always liked working from home, and this is even way before COVID. Don't have to deal with the traffic, the transportation issues, the subway in New York. So if you want to start to change what you're doing with trading, or if you want to just make extra money, like I said, because of the circumstances of the economy, if you have a computer and you can train between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern from home or wherever you are, from your office, if you are back in the office, then you can do this. 
and you can make extra money. Even a thousand dollars extra a week is very helpful to people in these times. And again, you can risk two hundred dollars a trade with a very small account. Any questions? I'm not seeing any others here, but I'm looking. Anyways, a lot of people want to trade. There's so much volume in the market. I mean, there's just so many different places out there now people can trade with the invention of Robinhood. I mean, people can open up an account with $500. There is a lot of people that lose in the market, that's true. But there is also people that win. It's, it's always like uh, if I made a triangle with the point at the top. You're always going to have the people at the very, very tippy, tippy top make a lot and the people at the bottom lose. And, and you could be someone that is a winner in the group. It's just that many people are all over the place with their trading. They just have a hard time focusing on one thing. How did I figure this out and how did I do it and how did I know one thing was the right thing to do? You know, I made a lot of money one time in a gap. It was a short when I first started trading. I didn't have my system invented then. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that all I needed was one trade after that one trade. I think I made it over $5,000. And that one trade in my risk was like 500 bucks. It moved a lot. It had a big move. It had momentum. I'll never forget it. It was Netflix and it was in a gap and it was a short. And after that, I realized that all I knew was one of these a day and I could do this. And so after that, it took me three years to develop my system. It's the focus and a lot of people lack that. Again, they're always looking for the next great thing, just like the Reddit stock chat rooms, the next great thing. It's, there's no consistency to that. If you really want to do this seriously, at least full time, then you have to find something that's consistent. And even if you want to do it for just extra money part-time, I still think you need to take it seriously because it's the only way to win. Now, if you trade in the past and you've lost, you have to sit down and ask yourself, are you willing to move forward and overcome the obstacles? Sometimes what happens is people have traded and they've lost money and then they feel very negative. They still keep trading, but in their mind, they have a negative attitude about trading. That does not serve yourself well. It's the same thing where if you took classes in the past and you didn't learn things from the classes, then you say, well, I don't ever want to do a class again. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. Just because you took bad classes doesn't mean you're never going to learn anything from somebody good. Uh, my class is chock full of information, very high level information. And I allow myself, you know, the time for people to call and ask me questions after the class if they want to or if they don't understand something. But I think traders also tend to live in the past. And this is just my general tip of the day. It doesn't matter whatever you're doing. You have to move forward and you have to think positive. You cannot live in the past. You must have amnesia. Think of it if you were in a relationship. If you got divorced, you had a bad relationship, what are you going to do? Never fall in love again? Have a bad attitude about relationships again? Be alone for the rest of your life? You cannot constantly live in the past with trades. People do that with trading. They do that with losses. They do that with classes. And they don't do it sometimes with relationships, but they do it with trading. Think of it like it's a relationship, because guess what? It is. It's your relationship with the market. And more importantly, it's your relationship with money. Some people have a grudge on their shoulder about the market or things. They still keep trading. They trade every day. They do. But they have a bad attitude. You have to get rid of that. You have to move on and you have to think positively. Think about the relationship example with love because you don't want to be alone for the rest of your life and hate everybody that you meet just because you had a bad relationship or a bad divorce or a bad person that you had a relationship with where it didn't work out. You have to be able to move forward and think positively. And you have to do that in anything in life, quite frankly. But it really has to come down to learning. And I think that this is critical. If you're new, I can teach you. It doesn't matter if you're brand new. But the fact is you cannot stop inflation. It's going, going, going. You only have one choice. Like I said, you've got to earn money. <clears throat> it's the only thing you have to do. You have to earn more money because I do think that going into 2022, we're going to see prices rise again. And there's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. And so we, we have to kind of have a plan of action. So think right now, it's a good time of the year, we're getting into the end of the year, it's a good time to, to actually get together a plan of action, what are you gonna do with your training between now and the end of the year, and what are you gonna do in 2022? What is your plan of action? I always think it's good to do that, I like to write things down, it helps me focus on goals that I have. Goal setting is very important. Now let's look at a trade we did here in Facebook. This is a daily chart of Facebook, we did this trade here, Again, we talked about it earlier, kind of have it blown up here now. Stock close here, gap down, boom, fell off a planet. This was on the 26th. You see the big bar right here? We shorted this. 
So on Tuesday, October 26th, I sent out a Gap Options newsletter. This is an email service I have for people. We bought the puts, the 31750s, in Facebook. It fell off the planet that day. I did it for the Friday expiration, but we got in, got out. The cost was $3.65, 25 contracts, which is an advanced risk. Again, you can risk more, you can risk less. I'll be over the beginner risk in a minute. Was a $9,125 risk, sold at $10. Profit was $15,875 in one trade in one day. This was a nice move. It was 174% return on investment. Again, sometimes they're just gonna go away more than once. You don't, you, you don't plan them, you don't know. It just happens, boom, you're in it, it falls. And one of the reasons I love shorts, I love shorts, is because stocks tend to fall faster than they rally, Microsoft being the exception last week, but stocks, many, 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 many stocks tend to fall uh, fast. Panic comes in, selling comes in, and they sell off. There's really no panic in something when it's moving higher. You might wanna buy it today, you might wanna buy it tomorrow. There's really no panic to get in and buy something, but there is a panic situation going on very often when things are falling and people are losing money okay so the facebook option here with a beginner risk three contracts three dollars and 65 cents risk was a thousand ninety five sold at ten you would have made what one thousand nine hundred five dollars so if you risked a thousand ninety five in this facebook trade you could have made a hundred seventy four percent return on investment last week and one day you're in you're out and I sent this out kind of late. I saw it was happening, 11.37. Many of the options trades I send out in the pre-market, this was a late one. This was a late one. And again, I'm going to go back to the chart here quickly. Called it, boom, drop, boom. So yeah, I called the 31750s. It fell right into it. Here's the volume. Take it, boom, get out, done. So this was an options trade, not an equity trade. Okay, we are going to go over some equity trades here in a minute, but it was a gap. It was a gap, okay? Now, let's look at the market. This is the QQQs. Look at even where this has went since I took the picture of this. Here we have the drop, then we have the rally. We did a put, seems like forever ago. This was almost a month ago, October 4th. Let me show you this guy. October 4th was here. This was a gap down. Stock close here, gap down. Again, QQQs is the market ETF, fell, boom. Got the drop. Down here's the volume. So we did puts in this. So right before the open, I called the 357 puts in the QQQs that expired that week. Again, take it, get out, boom. Cost was $3.80. Contracts, 20 contracts is an advanced risk of 7,600, sold at $7.60. Profit 7,600, return on investment 100%. Again, you can put in an order if you're busy or doing stuff around the house, wherever you're going, you could buy it. Then you could just put a sell order. Just double it up, put a sell order at 100% if you can't sit and watch it. Now, I watch stuff. I like to watch stuff. I'm looking at my chart and stuff. But if you can't, if you cannot do that, just put in a sell order. Boom. Okay? And it'll hit. And you're in, you're out. Again, I'm going to go back. So we did the 357s. Take it to the right. Here you see where we are. It was a little bit above it, fell, 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 fell through it, boom. And this one we did early, dropped, fell, ran all the way down here to 352-ish. Actually, it broke 352. Okay. And a beginner risk, again, this is an options trade based on my gap analysis. The cost was 380, three contracts, which was 1140, sold at 760 again. You could buy it, stick in the sell order, Boom, $1,140 profit in one day in this option. A lot of the options trades where they have to hold them, hold them, hold them. No, again, everything I do is momentum, momentum based. If the option goes immediately, I'm out, I'm out. I mean, why hang on? Okay, you, you, this is an idea again of making money. You wanna make extra money, again, on top of your regular job, or as your full-time job, or just to cover the cost of inflation. The idea is money, 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 green, coming in. You know, again, you can take it out, you can use it to build up your account, whatever you wanna do, okay? Any questions from anybody? Quiet group here today. All right, I'm gonna keep talking. Hey, Melissa, hey, it's Raleigh. Hey. 
and uh, yeah, there was a couple of questions that came in that I wanted to share with you. I think you've addressed it, but I want to make sure that I restate that. It's apparent that when you size up a trade and you're going to enter into it, that you have an idea for what your profit target and your stop loss might be. Um, and I think you were talking about risking one unit of risk, you know, for one unit of gain, like a one to one. But is, is that a correct statement? Do you go in the market with an idea of what you would be satisfied with, even if the market decides to run? Well, I, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but as far as targets, yes, I have targets. I have targets, okay. uh, like before I get in a trade, whether it's an equity trade, a day trade, a margin, or whether it's an options trade. On the options newsletters, I give the targets. I said the target okay. in Microsoft, which I don't have in this. I don't have the Microsoft trade in this lecture. I said in the target, the target was 325, dream target, and it got there. I give the targets in the newsletter. As far as in the live room where I do the day trades, I just tell people the targets in the morning in the room. The target for ZG this morning was 70. It far surpassed that, far surpassed that today. So we got out way before it hit 65. But yes, I give the targets. And again, I like to be done day trading early in the morning. I will be in options later because I don't feel like I have to babysit the options because options are, I don't have to get out of the option before four. If it moves, I get out, but I don't feel like I have to babysit it. I have to get out of a day trade before four. So I, like again, with the ZG, I didn't do an option in that. I could have, I had no idea that it was gonna go like $10 in the day or would have done an option too, but that didn't have the weeklies. That Those options in ZG are out like, only they only have the monthlies, I think, on this, and I tend to do weekly options. And there was a follow-up question was in there is that, and I can see where this has come from, you know, when you're into a winning trade, do you ever think about trailing a stop and just letting it go? Or you're just like, Raleigh, I've got these rules that I've worked on. I want to be in and out in the market. I don't mess with that. I, uh, if people want to do that, more power to them. I don't do that personally, but that's not a rule per my class or my system. That's just a Melissa thing, but I don't do it. It's a personal discretion. If you want to do it, go for it. Some people get out of a hat and hold the rest. I don't do any of that. I'm all in or I'm all out. That's just my personality. That has nothing to do with the system. If it works for you, do it. I got you. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So anyways, getting back to being successful, a lot of it has to do with having a system, and not only that, it has to do with the quality of your system, which is very, very important. And, and I think the takeaway from anyone that's here today and has been listening to me for the last 43 minutes is, please trade with a system. Do not take pot shot trades. Do not gamble. Do not take these crazy rented trades that you learn to think about or why they're doing them or whatever. Try to stay focused and have a system. You want to get in an airplane that a pilot has a checklist. He has a system. Boom, boom, boom. He goes through it. He doesn't say, oh, we're going to go. We're going to just go, boom. You know, we're going to take off. He goes through the checklist before they take off every single time. Every single person has a checklist and a system who is serious about what they're doing. You could, it could be an accountant. It could be an attorney. It could be a pilot. It could be a doctor. You're going into surgery. All of it. You know, this idea of just kind of going with flying by the seat of your pants, it doesn't work for trading. And quite frankly, it really doesn't work for anything. Okay. I mean, it might work for talking on TV. Sometimes I've been ready to go on TV and they, they're in my ear and they're saying, can you talk about do what do but do something? And I don't, I don't know anything about it. I know nothing at all and I wing it. That, that is not the ideal situation. I don't like doing that. I've done it before. But in general, people should be well prepared before they take trades. Well prepared. I know exactly what I'm doing sometimes three hours before the open. I might know what I'm doing tonight. I might know what I'm doing tonight. After I'm done here, I'm going to look. There are earnings that are reporting tonight after 4 o'clock, and I may decide what I'm doing tomorrow morning, tonight. The sooner that you can prepare, go through a checklist, have a system that you follow, be disciplined in what you do, the more money you're going to make, the easier it's going to be for you, the less stressful trading is going to be, and you're not going to have to think on the fly. Because thinking on the fly, it doesn't work out good most of the time. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, getting back to the key ingredient, having a system. Just drilling into people's heads. And not only that, having a niche. Okay, so my niche is gas, but it's particularly shorts. I really, really love to short. I told you the reason I like to short because stocks drop quickly. I like fast trains, okay? But I'm really looking for institutional money. I'm reading institutional money in the gap, and I'm using that using my 26 point checklist, which I use in the morning in the pre market. The checklist helps me follow institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. What do I mean? 
I mean hedge funds, I mean big banks, I mean large, large traders. That's what's making the gap in the first place. You have to figure out which one to play, which one they're gonna hammer, like today, like Zing G, and also if they're gonna move it up or they're gonna move it down. And that's what I figure out in the system. So the professional gaps are the ones that I follow, not the ones with regular traders. I wanna do the ones that are the big, big money and at the big volume. And so we're, all the stocks we're doing are things that you would know, that you're familiar with. We're not doing low float stocks or cheap, cheap stocks or anything like that. But I, I figured out, again, on the pre-market, the correct direction to play the gap. And then I confirm the large money will flow with it. And the large money is the big institutional money. So my rating system, my 26 point rating system, this is what you come and learn from me if you wanted to learn my system. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do. It pinpoints the direction of the footprints of institutional money and gaps. What do I mean by institutional money? Here's a chart of IBM. This was a couple weeks ago. We did this. What happened? This had earnings. Closed up here around 142. Boom. Open in the morning here around 134. This got hammered too. Similar to ZG actually. So this was up here the night before at 142. Open in the morning at 134. Institutional money sold sold their shares in IBM, this sold off. They sold it, it fell. It fell all day. This was up here around 134 and it was down here around 128. That's a big move for this stock. It's a big fat bar. You can see the big fat one over here as well, but this is a pretty big bar for this chart. Again, it's about $6. So we shorted this as a day trade and we did put it as an option, but this had institutional selling and not only that, it continued. Here it went, it kept going. It never looked back. This is where it is today. Nowhere near where it was here, let alone where it was here. So again, this had selling, okay? Now, what else do I mean by institutional money? You could have buying. Okay, we're talking about buying. This closed here, gapped up. We went long MCD. Here we are. So this was down here at 236. This was here around 241-ish. And then look at it where, where it went. Ran up $10, you could have gone long it here, could have got out, you could have gone long it here, done an option, got the move up. This was a huge trade too, why? It had a jumongous move, it made new highs. It ran up, like I said, $10, $11. And this is all from the original day of the original gap, and it just went up almost vertical. <clears throat> so that got bought by institutional money. You wouldn't have had a move like that as quick as it happened without it. And again, look at the volume. Way down here. Okay. So I'm looking for institutional money. That's what I'm following. I'm following the gap. It creates a sense of urgency. And then what happens? People either go long or they sell. Now here's a day trade. Went over a couple of options. Here's a day trade. Stop close to your gap down. This is INTC. Again, dropped. We shorted this. Now let me clarify. This is an equity trade. Entry was $50. Shares were 4,000, risk was 2,600, you could risk less, you could have done 1,000 shares, risked a quarter of this. Exit was 49.25, so we pulled 75 cents out of this trade. Profit was $2,800, this was a day trade, an equity trade here. You would need a margin account to do this. I did not do an option in this, this is where we're in and we're out really quick. These are the trades we're in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Looking to get in and out between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. You can open up a retail trading account. You can open up a prop trading account. You can trade anywhere you want as long as you have charts and you can short and you have a margin account that you can take the position, okay? Similar to the options, your risk needs to be the same. If you're risking 2,000, 2,000 or 1,000, 1,000, it needs to be the same in every trade. And again, I'm looking to flip it over one to one if I can. That was a nice gap. That was earnings as well. That was 10.22. We also did a short in Facebook that was an equity trade. We talked about the option. This sold off a couple of days. This was 1026. This was the day we were talking about it here. We did the put, we also did a day trade. This is expensive. So you might have just done the option, but if you have the buying power, you go for it. 312.90 was the short. Again, this just fell off a cliff. 2,000 shares was a risk of 2,800. Exit 311.50, profit was 2,800. In, out, boom, that's it. Here's the drop. So this is an equity trade where you're taking it on margin and you need the BP to do it. And again, buying power means what? If you're at a retail place, you have four times the amount of your cash uh, in buying power. 
If you're at a proud place, you usually have 10 to 1 cash you're buying power. You don't need the full cash, 100% cash. And if you do not understand margin accounts, you can feel free to email me about that and I will answer any questions for you. <clears throat> and this is just a nice testimonial from Rick. Rick is in the class, Rick's been in the room, Rick has done options. And again, he did five of the IBMs. So it, it, you could do one. You, I mean, he made $2,400 in five. You don't have to do you know, a lot of these contract sizes in these trades because the system works and you just follow it. And again, if one trade loses, then you lose then you lose in that one. It's the idea of having far more winners than losers and making good choices and finding quality trades. I've been looking for an apartment here in New York for a year. It's been frustrating to say the least, particularly with the city and the, with the conditions in New York. But anyways, I could have found a million apartments. I had one that I was in love with. I love the apartment. It was very expensive. My mom said, you're going to be miserable there. It doesn't have any closets. It literally had no closets to hang your clothes. Crazy beautiful apartment. Very expensive. The price was insane. It was all buildings. I would have had to fold all my clothes. And every time I wanted to wear something, I would take it out and iron it. And I, was, I, I just wouldn't have done that. So anyways, I didn't end up doing it. I want a quality apartment if I'm going to spend a lot of money. It has to have everything I want. It has to have everything I want. The tree has to have everything I want. It has to meet all the checks. It has to get all the points I need. It's got to get at least 20 or more. And the higher the points, the better. Microsoft was such a good gap, such a fabulous gap. And again, that's one of the reasons why I held that and it went to the dream target on that day. But if you come and you want to learn from me, the system tells you how, when, and when, how you make money in the market, you will trade a gap. That rate side, what stocks do you trade? Again, follow the system that rate 20 points or more. And when you trade them early in the morning, as close as you can to the open when they set up and trigger. And whatever amount you want to risk, if it's $1,000 to trade $500, look to flip it over once a day. That's your goal. If I take a trade right out of the gate and lose this, then I'll take another trade. You know, I don't stop. But if I take one trade and I make the money and hit my goal for the day in one trade, then I stop. I don't trade, 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 trade. <laughs> so I have a live trading room. If you would like a trial for the rest of this week, Thursday and Friday, you can email me. I will send you a free trial. You can come in the room, you can observe. I do not know what we're doing, like I said, tomorrow morning. I'm sure we'll do something. It is earning season, it is a busy time. It is a busy time to train. I think it's important to just book money. That's why I'm not piggish with targets and everything. Obviously it wasn't today with ZG. But there are times you can be piggish, you know, like I was with Microsoft, but I'm not like that with every trade. I really just set my goal and get out. And that's why also if I take a trade in the morning and I'm up, I just get right out. But the, but the checklist is what tells you what to do. It's a consistency that you need in order to do this right. And as far as money management goes, you have to try to find an amount that you can feel comfortable with that you can risk every trade. You can't risk 5,000 in one trade and 1,000 in another trade and 500 in one trade and 2,500 in another trade. You'll be all over the place. And that will be the one that you lose and that will be the one that you risk too much. You have to be consistent with your risk. It's extremely important. And don't be afraid to take a loss. Everyone takes loss. I've been doing this for 13 years and I have trades to lose. I hate it. I don't like it. But it doesn't ruin my day. And it doesn't ruin my week. You get upset for the moment. You slug it off and you just have amnesia and take the next trade and do it. And you have confidence in yourself that you can do it. And that's the difference when you understand a system and you understand that a certain amount will not work simply because of the odds of trading. Sometimes there isn't any reason why things don't work. They just don't. Uh, you know, Jay Powell may come out and say something and woo, and then it ruins your trade. That's nobody's fault. You couldn't have anything that happened. You never know. So you have to understand the system, and that is why I use stops. Stops are like the insurance. They protect me. It's okay to take a stop, but you still have to have way more wins than stops. The idea is to make more than you lose, and I think that's what people struggle with. But I do focus on quality. I absolutely focus on quality. It's return on investment versus return on risk and trading, depending on if you want to do equity trades or options. Again, if you do an option, I actually think 50% return on investment is good. But you can wait for 100%. Some trades don't go to 100%, and some are way more. So if you can't watch it, I say put a sell order at 50. If you can watch it, look for the target. Look for it to go to the target. I give the targets in the chart. When we're in the, in the train room, in the live room, I'm just telling you where to get out. And I'm telling you the, it, the, the exits, and I'm telling you the targets. So I think it's a lot easier for people. But again, you have to be able to trade on margin with an equity account, just like we, I just reviewed the INTC and the Facebook. Okay. But the fact is that if you know where something's going to go before it goes there, and I'm not going to give you the gap itself, but if you know where it's going to 
video before it does, you can make a lot of money. I knew Microsoft would go where it went before it did. I knew the ZG would too. That is very beneficial. Did I know that ZG earnings would be bad and it would open today at 73? No. I was not in the train prior to, like I wasn't in it yesterday. Okay. I got in it this morning after a gap, after I rated it in the pre-market and said, this is good. Then it set up and I took it. Then the entry is the confirmation, but I still was in it early. And you can see, if you get in something early and it drops all day, well, look, you know, that's how you make money. But I'm looking for a dollar, really, in most things. Two bucks. I mean, it depends what the price point is of the stock. Obviously, something like Facebook moves differently than something like INTC. But it's the idea of knowing where it's going to go ahead of time. It's the idea of being able to predict it, okay? It's about proper trade selection. Again, I teach all of this in the class. I'm looking for institutional money. I'm using my system. I'm rating the gap. I'm sticking with one thing. Is it possible to do this on the side? Yes. I have people all across the board. People that are doing trains and they're working. People that have businesses and they're doing trains. People that are in the trading room full time. I mean, people are retired in the trading room. I just have a whole range of people. At this point now, I've taught for so long. So it's whatever works for you. Some people are in the United States. Some people are in foreign countries. Depending on the time zone you're in, whatever works for you. But you've got to be available between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. I do my best to help people answer their questions and go over stuff. But I think it's important to have a plan of action. Do not think it's too late for you to turn your year around if you're not having a good year trading. It is not too late. You absolutely can make money between now and January 1. We get good trades every day. If you did the trial this week, I'm sure you'd make money in the two days you come to the trial. I mean, I'm calling good trades. But it is important for people to understand what to do in order to come into the trading room and join. The class is a prerequisite. Um, so I'm kind of going a little bit faster. But if you're interested and you want to learn, um, my system is what I teach. It's a class once a month. It's a it's a 26-point rating system. And the purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So the class is this weekend. I know that's in a couple of days. Today is the third. But if you've got the weekend free, if you want to do it, you can join. I have, still have spaces open. The class is online. I'm in New York. You don't have to come to New York. The class is online. You can live anywhere in the world and take it. It's $6,999 for the class. It's two days, full on, one hour break for lunch both days, and it's nine to five. If you're interested and want to sign up, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I'm running a special for the webinar for anybody that's here. If you sign up and do the class this weekend and sign up by Friday, which is the 5th, you can get the trading room free and the options newsletter free to the end of this year. So you would get almost two months in the room and the newsletter, which is huge. Plus then you do the class this weekend and I'm offering the room and the letter free with the class. The deadline for this is Friday. If you want a trial, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com too. Now let's see where the market is really quickly before I leave. If I put my chart up, Will you be able to see this or do I have to click this on and off? And any last minute questions? I know we had a spike here with the Fed. Look, oh, oh my God, look at this. <laughs> We're in 460 calls right now on the SPY. Oh my God, I am so good at what I do. We're probably gonna go to 470. Here, you wanna target? This is a great exit today. If you were somebody in my trades, a great answer. We're probably going to go to 470. Look at this, 465. I don't think we can see your charts there. I think you have to sort of oh, share God. that screen. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks so much. Huh? Thank you so much. I'm going to let everybody go. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Well, that's wonderful. Melissa, thank you so much for your time. And I can tell by your enthusiasm, you're having a good day here. I, I haven't been watching the charts. I know the Fed made an announcement, and I think the market was going up. Thanks for having me.